Hey guys, this is Gus from Hardware Unplugged, and today we're going to be checking out the Razer V2 Gigantis and why I think this is a great solid option for a control pad. Before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like button to show support, and if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe down below to see more content like this. With that being said, let's begin. So first let's start out with the dimensions. The dimensions of the mouse pad are 450 by 400 millimeters and this is for their large version of the mouse pad. I feel like 450 by 400 millimeters is the perfect size for beginners especially if you play for the low dpi sensitivity like I do. I play at 400 dpi and I feel like the size is perfect especially for a pad that does not have stitched edges like the V2 Gigantis. One of the things I realized was that mouse pads with non-stitching really tend to irritate my forearm but because it's big enough for me to put my whole forearm over it, I didn't have that trouble. So the glide at first felt rough and it was definitely faster at the beginning. But over two weeks, I noticed that the glide definitely slowed down a bit. So in the beginning, the mouse pad, the mouse pad felt good and it did have a little speed to it. But at the two week mark, it did tend to slow down and I noticed it got affected by humidity a lot. Yeah, so, so this mouse pad is more on the control side of things as opposed to something like a Thor pad, which is a speed pad. Before this mouse pad, I used Logitech G640, and I felt like that one was the right amount of speed and control. Compared to Logitech G640, the V2 Gigantis almost feels the same, with the accession that the vertical movement is a little slower, as opposed to the G640 where the X and Y are basically the same. This mouse pad on the horizontal movement feels nearly identical to G640, however, at the vertical movement, it is slower. More in depth into the humidity, the Razer V2 Gigantis did get affected by it, but not a whole lot as compared to Melagia G640. I feel like Melagia G640 got affected by humidity a whole lot and it ended up feeling like Shrek Swamp after about two weeks, and I didn't like it. And I really, like, and I really didn't like how it felt sticky and grainy. The V2 Gigantis did hold up a little better, but it did get affected by humidity. As for the base of the pad, it is grippy and I had no issues playing with it. Um, swiping and moving around didn't move the moss pad at all. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that the thickness of the moss pad is 3mm thick. Alright, so overall, I really enjoy this pad. I really like this moss pad a lot. Like, a lot. It's one of my favorite pads right now just because it's so budget friendly. The G640 costs anywhere between $35 to $40 depending on the color. And this right here was just $15. $15 guys. It was really, really, really inexpensive and I really like the performance out of it. It almost feels like a, like a Logitech GX40 which I absolutely like. And I like it and I do like the Logitech GX40 a little better. But this is a close second. This is a close second. This is my second favorite mouse pad. And Razer so far has been killing it with their products. I really appreciate the effort they've been putting in. And definitely, this, and this is a mouse pad to definitely check out if you're in the market for either a new mouse pad or if you're someone who's just starting out and they want to get a well-rounded mouse pad, this is a good one to be in with. Well, guys, this is Gus from Hardware Unplugged. Again, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. This is Gus from Hardware Unplugged, signing off.